what's our um, agenda for today? So we will be discussing the marking criteria. How are you going to pass this station? And at the end, we will be having some workshop comparison. Let's do a quick comparison of the two examinations. Actually, this station, there is no like major difference. So the timing is for the old examination, probably for a few of you are doing the old test. It lasts for 15 minutes. And if you're doing the new test, it lasts for 14 minutes. So you will be using a black pen. And always remember, when you're doing your planning station, always make sure um, to remember the SMART. Okay? It should be short-term, um, measurable, um, attainable, realistic, and time-bound. So marking criteria. So the first criteria, make sure you write clearly and legibly. Remember that your examination or your papers the person who will be marking that is your examiner, okay? If your writing is like mine, make sure you improve your writing from now on and make sure that on that day of the examination, your handwriting is at its best, okay? So because remember, um, you cannot explain whatever you've written in your care plan once you've submitted it, okay? If the assessor or the examiner cannot understand what you've, whatever you've written there, it might result to a fail, okay? So always remember that. The second criteria is to identify two relevant nursing problems or needs of the patient. So on your examination, on your care plans, there are three sections and you only need to um, complete two care plans. If you've only identified one care plan or that will definitely result in a fail. The third page on your planning, it's just an extra paper in case you need to rewrite the whole thing. But again, you're only required to do or identify two care plans. So the example is the one in your screen. So it says here, Joe is experiencing joint pain with a pain score of 8 out of 10. So we learned back in university that the Bible of planning is Nanda. Do we all know what Nanda is? Yeah, we, we, do we know Nanda? It's the North America Nursing Association, uh, Nursing Diagnosis um, Association. So the only thing here is we are in the UK. So we are not using the NANDA. It, you may use this probably, but it's kind of complicated. We all know that. You can just simply identify whatever problem that is, as simple as the one on your screen. Okay? So you can just simply say, Joe experiencing joint pain with the pain score of 8 out of 10. This example is an actual problem. So can we also write something like um, risk problems? Of course. Okay, of course. You could also write um, risks for your patient. Later, we'll try and practice. So next is the aim of care. So identify aims for both problems. So you will fail if you've only identified one aim. Okay, so make sure you have two aims and make sure the aim of care is relevant to the problem identified. So if you're writing something about pain, of course, the aim should be relevant to that, same as the one on your screen. So the example here is Joe were verbalized relief from pain. So the fourth assessment criteria is sets both appropriate evaluation dates for both problems. So the re-evaluation date. So the format is the one on your screen. So after one hour and if the patient condition changes. So the one highlighted in orange you can use it in any problem. So let's say after, you can also write minutes, hours, days, and if the patient condition changes. This will be the format for this section. So Emmer, it's asking for the evaluation date. Can we also write the date? Of course you can. So if you write today or the actual date of your examination, that would be acceptable. Because remember, so on the example here in your screen, why, am, why did not I not write the actual date? Why? Because if you say, after one hour, will that happen on the same day? Of course. If I say, after a um, couple of minutes, is that happening today? Of course. And that is acceptable on the examination. Okay? So, how about the days, Emmer? When will it be applicable? Normally, for the scenarios happening in the community, days will be more relevant. Okay, days will be more relevant. You don't have you don't have to actually put the actual date. Let's say um, today is the twenty second, the 9th of March. 
end on the examination, you want the evaluation date after five days. You're counting after five days. Probably you can, but also you can just probably say how many days on the examination. Um, hopefully that is clear. <laughs> there you go. So I didn't realize that my camera is off all this time. Um, thank you. Sorry, sorry about that. Any question? No question. All right, let's move on. The fifth criteria is probably the hardest part of your planning because you are writing the interventions based on your um, problem or your aims. The fifth criteria is ensures nursing interventions are current, evidence-based, and it's best practice. Let's say TSB or the tepid sponge bath. So it's not a common practice here in the UK, okay? If your patient has a fever, we don't normally perform TSB or the tepid sponge bath. So if you're writing that as one of your interventions for a patient with fever, that may result to a fail, okay? So it's not the best practice in the Philippines or in Nepal or Nigeria or India. It's the best practice here in the UK. It should be based on um, current practice, and it should be evidence-based. Always remember that. So the one in your screen words when you're building your um, care provided, okay? So these are the, the useful words. So you could use the word assess, monitor, administer, assist, provide, educate, encourage, refer, and escalate. So these are the key words or the common words usually used or widely used when you're building your interventions for your care plan. Because for as long as you know these words, you will be able to create a solid care plan for your um, planning. Okay, so always remember these keywords. So, Emmer, how many care, how many, how many um, care providers do we have to actually write on our care plan? Probably, like, if you're going to write, uh, probably seven or eight would be the best number for your care plan. Most especially if you're writing the new test of competence, you have a lot of space. Okay, you have a lot of space for your care plans. But if you can write um, probably eight or so, probably that is better. Please do remember these words because we will be using this once we practice later on today. All right. So number six, self-care opportunities. So as you can see on your screen, this is only applicable for Legacy 2014. If you're doing the new test of competence, you, you don't have to accomplish this section of the planning station. Oh, that explains why it's now reduced to 14 minutes. So again, if you're doing the old examination, you will be given 15 minutes. If you're doing the new test of competence, you will be giving 14 minutes. So please um, do remember that. And this section is the major difference for your examination. So the care provided, the example is on your screen. So let's say my intervention is assess Joe in a comfortable position. My patient's healthcare activity would be Joe will be able to assume a comfortable position. So patient self-care activities, it talks about what the patient can do for himself, what the patient can do independently. Okay? Any question at this point? Later, we'll be give, doing some example. Any questions so far? Assessment criteria number seven. So uses professional terminology in care plans. So just remember, guys, the, the person who's reading your care plan after you finish it is a nurse. So you can you may use professional terminologies in your care plan. Assessment criteria number eight. So does not use abbreviations or acronyms. So please refrain from using acronyms or abbreviations on the examination. There are exemptions. Okay, there are exemptions such as the word news. Okay. We all know, we learned last week, or probably you know this already, the news is the National Early Warning Score. If you're writing that on your examination, that should be fine, okay? So news will be fine because they know that the new, if you're writing National Early Warning Score, it's too long, but it's acceptable if you're just abbreviating it, yeah? So those that is one of the examples. Avoid using or writing, let's say, NBM. So if you don't know what NBM is, so it's nil by mouth. It's the equivalent of NPO in the Philippines, okay? NPO is the nothing for RM, but in the UK, the counterpart for that is the nil by mouth. 
So nil meaning zero or nothing. Num assessment criteria number nine, it ensures strike through errors and retain um, legibility. So the example is below. So let's say you wrote, I love you, or you said, I love you, but you, you, you were wrong. You have to delete it. So you have to put a strike through, and that's how you correct your error. You can also put your initials on top, okay? But again, based on the marking criteria, writing or putting a strike through, if you commit an error, that should be fine. Again, you, can, you may write your initials if you like. So let's say, I love you, and then on top of that, ED. Okay? So make sure if you're saying, I love you, you meant it. Okay? So that is your um, ninth criteria. Okay? And criteria number 10, accurate prints, signs, and dates your care plan. So probably one of the major reasons why candidates are failing this station is they tend to forget to write their name. And it's probably one of the most heartbreaking reasons why candidates are failing this examination, okay? So I do recommend once you receive your papers for your planning station, go at the second page and immediately write your name and your signature and the date. So again, if you have, if you probably didn't attend our webinar last week, writing the word today is acceptable um, to refer for the date, okay, today. So if you don't want to write the word today, you could just probably practice writing the date of your examination. So just to let you know, um, on the examination, all the dates are written as today, okay? All dates are written as today. Number 11. I think this is the last um, criteria. Um, acts professionally throughout the procedure in accordance with NMC standard, um, NMC 2018, the code, and professional standards of practice and behavior for nurses, midwives, and nursing associates. Again, please um, be professional during examination. Again, probably there are like isolated cases where in candidates misbehave during the examination. Again, Cheating is one form of that. I, I know that you are not going to cheat on the examination, but again, just a reminder, it's part of the criteria. So I think that's all the criteria for our planning. So now we will now proceed practicing. I will give the scenario. So the scenario is on your screen. So let me read the scenario. Joe has been admitted to Whitley Ward via emergency department following an episode of shortness of breath and edema to his ankle. Joe has been treated with diuretic and it's now less breathless. So that is your scenario for your care plan, okay? We will be discussing Joe today. So the findings are, let's pretend you've done your assessment station, okay? You've done your assessment station. You've performed your A to E assessment. And these are the following findings. The, new, the patient's new score is 5. The patient's respiratory rate is 26. The patient has bilateral leg pain and the patient is complaining um, of pain. That is 6 out of 10. Um, the patient has frequent urination because the patient has been taking diuretics. So in the UK, um, normally people would say as, um, call it as water tablets. Okay, If they say, if they say um, water tablet, they're referring to diuretics. The patient is struggling with walking and the patient is anxious about his wife, who is left at home, and the patient is also afraid of dying, okay? So, these are your findings based on your conversation with your patient. Pain first, because I think we've discussed pain earlier. So, this is her problem. So, she said pain, um, bilateral leg, pain score 6 out of 10. And then later, we'll just do risk of fall. So, are you happy with this? Um, this problem? So if probably we're going to rewrite this, you could write Joe. So the patient's name is Joe Rizal, okay? So Joe is experiencing bilateral leg pain with a pain score of 6 out of 10. So that is your um, care plan. Happy with this? Joe experiencing bilateral leg pain with a pain score of 6 out of 10. So this is an example of your um, problems for your care plan. Happy with this? Yeah? So what, what will be the aim of care for this care plan? Shall we write um, Joe? 
will verbalize. How's this? Are you happy with this kind of um, um, aim? Joe will verbalize, reduce pain with a score of 0 out of 3. Or could we also write M or could we also write Joe will verbalize relief from pain with the score of of zero to three. So Emmer, why are you writing um, a range? Because probably remember um, we are our aim is the aim would be like realistic, okay? Realistic because sometimes um, after giving like intervention, sometimes the pain is still there, but it's reduced, okay? So that means your interventions are working. So at least remember six is probably like a moderate pain and you're aiming so at, so at least the patient could um, experience zero to three or reduced pain, okay? So that is your um, aim, of, aim of your care, okay? So re-evaluation date. So if the patient is in pain, when are you going to recheck the patient? Um, going back to our um, slide earlier. So when are you expecting um, to visit or revisit the patient? Every hour, probably. We will write after one hour and if the patient condition changes. There you go. All right. So on your care plans, please do not forget to write this phrase, okay? And if the patient's condition changes. So that means you are going to re-evaluate the patient um, if in case the patient condition changes. If you think the patient needs to be re-evaluated sooner, then uh, you will do it in real practice, yeah? So that is your um, re-evaluation date. Do you have any questions so far?